Hey there, welcome to alchemist.camp, where we learn to be better elixir programmers by building things. And today we're going to build out the slug feature that I did for StatWatch as a standalone project, just so you can see how it works really quickly without too much of a hassle. So basically, the goal is to get a user or a profile or a blog post name to use a slug in the URL instead of a number, which is what you'll get by default with Phoenix. So let's fire up an editor and get started. First, I'll make the font nice and large for all of you on smaller screens. So to start, we'll make a new Phoenix project. So we mix phoenix.new, and we're going to call this one by name. To get started quickly, we're going to use a generator, and it's going to be one of the new ones, or sort of new-ish ones from Phoenix 1.3. Core is the name of the context we're going to make, and then user, and users is the plural of user. Users are going to have names, which are strings, and they'll have hobbies, which are also strings, and that's it, because we're going to keep this super simple. And we have our new directory here by name, check out lib. We have a core and in it is our user. Since we're going to make the names a searchable field, let's also go edit the migration that was created for this and specify that names are to be indexed. So let's improve repo migrations. Here we go. And we'll add the index under the change block down here. Create index and give it the name of the table, users and name. With that done, we can run ecto.mic. Actually, no, we can't because if we even mix it without adding this line to our router, we'll get a bug. So let's start with that. It's going to be inside our web app right here by name web and router okay and with that done we should be able to do ecto.migrate actually that's not true we've got to create it first so we'll use ecto.create to create the database and then we can run the migration on it Good deal, good deal. Let's fire up the server now. Okay, we've got our default app plus our basic user scaffold and create a new user. Uh, let's say Sam and Sam's hobby is poetry reading. Excellent. So there's Sam, and we'll make another one called Jesse. And Jesse's hobby is foraging for mushrooms. All right. So we have our two users, we have our two hobbies. The problem is, right now, and I'll bump up the font size a bit so you can see this clearly. Right now, the URL. Not sure if that got bigger or not. Well, anyway, the intent was there. Uh, the URL has a one at the end of it, it's just users slash one, but that's that's kind of horrible. We'd rather have users slash Sam. And if we try to do users slash Sam, we get an error and that's because we're querying by ID everywhere. So the quickest way I know of to change this is phoenix.param. Phoenix.param is a protocol, and we don't even have to implement it. We can use derive and basically say what the parameter is going to be for this schema. You can use it with uh, structs as well, but it works with ecto schemas. And the important thing is you have to define it or you have to derive it before the schema. So phoenix.param. And we're going to say key is 
name. And that's all we have to do here. So you may be familiar with other Phoenix apps. So you've got a, an at user inside one of your templates that will actually be referring to that user.id or that user's ID. And you'll see that popping up in your URLs. Just this one change will make the users use name instead of ID. And that'll propagate all over your app. Won't quite do everything for us, but it'll be close. With that saved, let's restart our app. Now we see, when I, if you can see it, take my word for it, um, hovering over the show, it says localhost 4000 slash users slash Sam. Hovering over edit, it's slash users slash Sam slash edit. Hovering over delete, well, it's still just users hash. So we've got our links the way we want to, but there is a problem. When we try to show, inside the show of our controller, we're still using core.getUser and core.getUser is calling a get, like Ecto's get user, and that requires an ID. So we've got to change that one additional thing. You can see here our get user, it's taking an ID. We'll change this to a name, and since repo.get always uses ID, we use repo.getBy, and then we pass it a map of what we're going to use to get it. And that's going to be name. And the name we're getting is the name that was passed into the function. We have to make that change. Create user doesn't need any changes because that's taking in the entire struct. Update user, same thing. Delete user, same thing. Change user, also same thing. So with that saved, we'll go back, reload, and it works. And we can delete Sam. We can show Jesse, we can edit Jesse, uh, foraging for fruit. And we can create a new user as well. So there you have it. This is how you go from ugly ID numbers in your URLs to user-friendly names or uh, blog post titles or what have you. And that pretty much wraps it up for today. This is probably the simplest project we've ever done at alchemist.camp. And that's 100% thanks to the magic of Phoenix generators and higher order language features such as protocols. Till next time, code on.